Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 247 DIY. We've got the 2012 Forester back here in the shop. Just recently, uh, we had a failure of one of the emergency brake shoes back here underneath the rear rotor. So stick around if you want to see how to go ahead and replace that. All right, so as you can see, we've already removed the wheel and the caliper and the rotor itself. If you want a more in-depth look on how to remove the caliper, um, just about a week ago, I filmed a video on how to replace a rear caliper that was on the other side. I'll link that below. You can go ahead and take a look at that if you need to see how exactly the caliper comes off. And as far as the rotor, this one just came right off because we're missing some components and I'll show that in just a second uh, here in the rear end. But if you were just replacing your emergency brake shoes, without any issues here in the rear end, you would have to make some clearance in order to get your rotor off. And just down here, there's a little uh, gear on the bottom. And what you would do is you would line up this little rubber grommet on your rotor, pull that rubber grommet out and you can push a flathead screwdriver in there and you would turn that gear in order to bring these parking brake shoes in to clear the lip that they inevitably wear on the inside of your rotor here and that will allow you to pull the rotor right off. So what happened for me was I left for work one morning and nothing really seemed out of the ordinary. Drove all the way to work, went to park and when I went to pull the e-brake I basically felt like I had no no parking brake. There was just there was nothing there. There was no resistance. Thought it was pretty odd. Didn't really know what was going on. Then when I left work I was hearing kind of a weird noise from the rear end. Still had no parking brake. Got home uh, still had no parking brake, so I pulled it out here. First, I th honestly had thought I just snapped a parking brake line or something like that. Um, so I ended up pulling this off about a week ago uh, and found this just chilling inside of the rotor here. And this is your pad material off of the shoe that's supposed to be affixed to the shoe right there. And it had come off inside the rotor and was just kind of chilling inside of there. So what that had done was there was just too much room now um, that put this rear end assembly here out of adjustment and so when i was pulling my e-brake it was just taking up all that slack i have been driving it for a few days and these uh, rear parking brake setups are self-adjusting i've started to get a little bit of the parking brake back but obviously with no material here from which to bite there's really no function of the parking brake and i got to get this uh, squared away so that I can get my yearly inspection done. So let's go ahead and jump right in with tearing this old hardware out and getting the new hardware in. So when it comes to replacing the parking brake shoe assembly here, there's a lot of small components. Um, and once you have this torn apart, you can kind of forget where everything went. So the first thing I recommend doing um, is just taking your phone, get in here and take pictures of where everything goes, where all of these springs and brackets go, uh, mainly here on the top and then underneath, just so you have something to refer back to when you go to reassemble. So I'm gonna start by removing these two top springs here. We'll get those out of the way and then we'll, we'll keep moving from there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll remove this lower spring right here. And then once you open up the shoes a little bit, back up top here, you got this little bracket with a spring on the end. Remove that and retain that. Now we have to undo these little pins right here. They can be a little bit tricky. Um, they slide through the rear, so you're gonna to wanna to reach a hand behind to push to make sure you're not pushing these through. And there's a spring behind this cap, so what we need to do is push in on that. And once we push in, we can turn the cap. You'll notice there's a little keyway on there, and that will allow it to slide past the pin so we can get our shoe off. And then lastly, you'll notice this shoe here is going to be attached to your parking brake cable. 
So we need to turn it 180 degrees and you'll notice that you have this bracket here on the inside with a little horseshoe retaining clip up here. Um, you need to get whatever tool you can. I usually just use a flathead screwdriver in there, turn it sideways, open that shoe um, clip up, slide it out so that it will slide off of the pin. Don't worry too much about damaging that little horseshoe clip because your new hardware kit will come with a new one. All right, so we did skip ahead a little bit. Um, sometimes getting this stuff off can be a little bit of a headache and a nightmare, and this was giving me a little bit of trouble getting it off. Yes, they do sell tool kits for drum style brakes like this that can make the job a little bit easier. Um, I've just never really justified the cost because you can just get it done with normal tools. It may just be a little more difficult than with the specialized kits. So you'll also notice there's a small piece of the dust shield missing down here. It was basically starting to rot away to the point where it was just hanging on over here. Um, and with it loose like that, there's always the possibility that it can flap around and touch your rotor and create a lot of noise. So I just cut it off over to here. Um, the rest of this is on there pretty okay. It's really not going to affect anything. It, it's mainly like a splash guard to, you know, keep road grime and stuff out of there. The other side of the vehicle, it's completely gone and rusted away. It's just one of those things when you drive a vehicle during the winter uh, here in the Northeast, um, these dust shields will just rot away and fall off after a while. So when you go ahead and order your kit, you're going to get a box um, of four shoes, two obviously for either side. And with those, you'll get your new horseshoe clips uh, to hold that bracket to the inner shoe. But don't forget that you'll also need to order a component kit with all of your springs, your adjuster screws, um, and brackets. The only thing that doesn't come in these kits is that little triangular bracket that sat behind those two springs on the top. So make sure you keep that as well as that half moon shaped bracket that with the square shaped spring that sat just behind your hub here. You need to keep those two brackets. So let's go ahead and talk about prep before we start reassembling. One thing I like to do is I just take a wire wheel and I come around the inner portion, not the dust shield here, but the inner portion where your brake components sit. You'll get a lot of buildup of brake dust and grime and rust. Um, so just try to get that off of there. Now you wanna pay specific attention right here to where those springs and that bracket sat. So clean that off real good. And then I just take a round file and I run it through the hole here uh, where this bracket's gonna slide through the peg on the new brake shoe. The other thing I like to do before we go ahead and get reassembling, you'll notice these little raised portions here and your shoe edge will actually sit against those raised portions. And there's not a lot of movement there, but there is some movement that that pad needs to slide on and not actually catch on. So I'll just take a little bit of anti-seize and just put a little layer on each one of those pads. You could use grease if you want. It's more just a personal preference. I prefer to use anti-seize in this situation. And we're gonna do the same thing to the peg here on this new shoe that's gonna be going on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install this shoe. It's gonna be difficult to try to keep this in frame while I do it and install it. But once it's installed with the new clip on there, I can give you a close up on that and you'll, you'll get an idea of how exactly it goes together. Now remember, depending on what side you're on, you need to pick the right shoe. So for this rear passenger side, we need to pick the one where when your peg is at the top, it's facing the inside of the assembly. Okay, so basically we take this bracket here, we slide it over the peg, and then you'll notice there's a little curved washer that needs to go over first. My index finger would be the top and my middle finger would be where it touches the bracket. And then your horseshoe clip goes over the top of that. One thing I find is that these, it's, it's a very kind of fiddly process to get this together to begin with. And these little spring clips just make the whole thing sit a little too tall. So usually what I do is I bring them over to the flat spot on my vise and I flatten them out a little bit. You don't want them completely flat. You still want them to retain that kind of spring function. But once you flatten them out a little bit, then your little horseshoe uh, retainer here can slide through the groove on the peg. And then you just take a pair of pliers and you squeeze the two ends together um, in order to secure everything together. So next we're gonna go ahead and get the shoe in place. Um, inevitably my hands and my arms are gonna get in the way while trying to film it. So to give you the idea of what we're gonna do is this pin 
just like the one we took it out, is gonna slide through the back of the assembly and it's gonna slide through the hole in the shoe. Once it's through, we're going to put our spring over the top and then we're gonna take our cap, slide that through the notch and then we'll have to press down while making sure that the pin doesn't turn so we can turn this cap 90 degrees so that the pin becomes locked into the cap and everything holds steady. Okay, so we're all on there. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world and I actually struggled for quite a while until I remembered um, and this happened to me the last time too. When you buy these kits for some reason, the spring they provide is too tall. And when you squish this all the way down, there's actually not enough room for the pin to actually slide all the way into the cap. You could probably cut a coil out of these new springs, but if your old springs are fine, which, I mean, these are a little rusty, but they're still, they're still gonna provide tension. They're not gonna, there's no reason why they're not gonna function like they should. So I end up reusing these old ones. I forgot that's what I did the last time, um, just simply because these springs they include, they just don't work. They're, they're physically too tall. So same, if the same thing happens to you, um, just remember that you can reuse the old springs. So we're gonna go ahead and put the other shoe into place, but when you do that, you can't forget that this bracket needs to go in first or else you won't have enough room. So this is the orientation to go. A spring faces the front of the vehicle and just make sure you throw a new spring on there. And right before installation, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some brake grease. We're gonna throw it right here and right here. Um, anywhere there's gonna be moving components here in the rear end, it just really can't hurt to throw some brake grease in there just to keep uh, components moving free and not seizing up. Okay, so we've gotten that bracket in place. It's just kind of sitting there. Um, so as we squeeze these shoes together, um, as we put the springs in, you just need to make sure that the notches line up. But next we're gonna move up here. We're going to throw our triangular bracket back on. And then we're gonna place our yellow springs uh, back into the shoes. All right, and there you can see we've got both springs in there. The 90 degree portion just goes through the hole on either side, and then you just gotta find a way to stretch it over onto there. I usually just take a flathead screwdriver, and once your spring is in there, I'll just take the screwdriver, run it through your spring, wedge it on the other side of that uh, peg there, and it will stretch over and then pop right over top of your peg. That's the easiest way I've found to do it. And then finally, we need to assemble the bottom here. So your kit's gonna come with a new adjuster screw. It's two parts, so you've got the outer body here as well as your screw. Here in the back, the screw is gonna face the rear of the vehicle. Put some anti-seize all over the threads of that screw and screw it all the way in. And I like to load up each of the pockets on either side with some more anti-seize. And that's just gonna go in there like that. And then you have your last and final spring is gonna go in there. Now we can place our rotor back over top. I just like to take a lug nut for now, throw it on there to hold the rotor in place. And then spin our rotor so that this keyway hole here will be lined up with that adjuster screw. Now for me personally, I don't do this enough where I really remember um, whether 
turning that uh, cog up or down tightens or loosens. So prior to putting the rotor on is I'll just do it up and down a few times to see what way is loose and tight. So I already did that and I know um, pushing down on that cog is going to expand our brake shoes. So as far as adjustment goes, what we want to do is we want to expand our brake shoes all the way out to the point where they're contacting and we can't turn our rotor anymore. Then once we have it to that point, we want to back it off just enough to the point where you can turn your rotor again without having any interference from the pads. All right guys, so that's this side all wrapped up. We went ahead and we properly adjusted the shoes inside the rotor there. Um, I realize this may not have been filmed the absolute best. Um, I tried to do my best to film while I was working, but I'll be honest and say that I absolutely hate this job. I hate doing the parking brake shoes. Um, they're super frustrating. There's all those little tiny parts and pieces in those springs and it just gets super frustrating, which is why I cut away a lot and came back because it was just taking a lot of time with the camera running. Um, but if you're using this as a guide to try to tackle your own project, I hope I filmed it well enough and described what I was doing so you can find it useful. So now I just need to jump on the other side, tackle that side, and we'll be all set. So as always guys, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. Feel free to leave a comment below and if you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks.